Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. Welcome to A Toast to the Men with your boy, S.D. Booker. Thanks for joining me. Before we get started, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and hit that like button. Let's get into it. So this video is about Paul Pierce and not only just about Paul Pierce, but what we can learn from Paul Pierce and this whole uh, fast fiasco, this newest uh, dilemma. So Paul Pierce was recently fired or parted ways with ESPN because in IG Live, he initiated, revealed that he was smoking weed, had strippers behind him and drinking liquor. Now, none of these things are illegal. Now, just because something's not illegal doesn't mean you should do it or let the public know you're doing it. Um, ESPN is a Disney company. Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, Daffy Duck. It's a Disney company. That's not the image they want their employees portraying. They have every right to stick by that that policy, stick by that that those principles and draw that line. That's their right as a company, as a corporation. He's an employee. He has to abide by their policies and procedures, by their conduct policies, or hey, leave or get fired. That's their right. Now, why did Paul Pierce do this? I'm not sure. Part of me wants to say he has to be smarter than this. But then when I look at his history and some comments he's made, and some, some things he's done, it makes me wonder. And then another side of me says, Man, this was calculated. This was planned. He did this on purpose. Because rumor has it that he was going through negotiations with ESPN. So you never know, you know, how those negotiations were, were turning out. And maybe he was tired and just wanted uh he wanted to get fired. Right? He wanted or he wanted to be brought in and, and part ways, to agree to part ways with ESPN. So those are, you know, two things that, that uh, maybe, maybe happen. One of those two things. Now, when I look back on Paul Pierce, man, I wasn't, you know, a big supporter of Paul Pierce. They really like his style. Um, now, I can't take it away. He was, a, he was a great player. Just wasn't, you know, my cup of tea as far as his style. I thought he was too stiff. Not fluid enough, uh, not athletic enough, but skillful. Skillful, and he could score that ball. So, uh, and he had a long career. He's a champion, had a long career in the NBA. So you can't take that away from him. But what really brought Paul Pierce onto my radar was, man, I can't remember the year. This was uh, maybe his first year, first, second year in the NBA. And, uh, he was stabbed 11 times and hit over the head with a bottle at a nightclub. Now, it's speculated that he was shooting a shot at some woman. That woman was attached to a man. Uh, that man was uh, part of a gang, rap crew and gang. And, uh, hey, allegedly he took offense to that. And, uh, hey, st start poking Paul up. And, uh, you know, he, he barely survived that situation. So that's the first thing that kind of really brought him onto my radar. I knew about him, but, like I said, I, I never really checked out his game that often because what I saw just didn't appeal to me. Now we fast forward. I read recently, maybe a year or two ago, maybe three years ago, he got into an altercation with a security guard 
had a Conor McGregor fight. You know, it looked like, you know, they say he was intoxicated and uh, became irate, got into a security guard. Now, you know, those things can happen, right? Those things can happen. Uh, something recently happened with Charles Oakley uh, in New York, uh, Madison Square Garden. So uh, things happen. Now we're human. Things happen. Not saying he was in the wrong. Not saying he was in the right. We'll just say things happen. But then we fast forward a little bit more and his comments about LeBron. He made a statement that the current NBA players have fear in their heart when they face LeBron. And that the players of his era did not fear LeBron, but they're all gone. Now, it's cool, it's okay to make that statement if you're not an analyst for ESPN. But you can't make that statement being an analyst for ESPN. The players are the product, right? You just alienated all NBA players, right? You, you can't do that. You know, that was a personal statement. That was personal. And fast forward a little bit more, he makes a statement about D. Wade. Now, we all know D. Wade has retired, but at this time, ESPN was trying to reflect on D. Wade's career and where he, where he ranks, uh, his accolades, uh, where he stands, how he, how he would be remembered. Again, Paul Pierce is an analyst. He makes the statement that he had a better career than D-Wade. Once again, <laughs> this is a personal jab. It's not the time for that. This is not the time for that. You were not asked that question, and it's not the time for that. You're an analyst. Let's take the time to just honor D-Wade and pay our respects to greatness. So, it, it looks like Paul Pierce is a little quirky. Uh, doesn't really know the temperature of the room and uh, doesn't really think before he speaks or acts. And so, uh, Maybe this whole thing with the strippers and the liquor and the weed on IG Live was not calculated. Now, this is not to bash Paul Pierce. You guys know I don't believe in, in judging, but I will analyze and observe. What can we learn? Guys, if you want to do your own thing, you can't work for someone. And uh, if you just want to voice your opinion, you can't work for someone. But I would caution you about just voicing any opinion or saying anything you want to say, even if you are an entrepreneur, because your business is dependent upon customers and clients. So, right, so <laughs> you have to know the temperature of the room you got to know what to say, when to say it, how to say it. Uh, why would Paul Pierce, a married man, post this on IG Live, go live with this on IG? Why would he do this? This man has kids. Uh, why would he do this? And I've come to the conclusion that a lot of us, man, a lot of us men are just grown boys. Um, Paul's 43 years old. Man, he didn't grow up with social media. You know? Um, you know, you can't even say he's, he's, you know, 15, 20 years old. And he just grew up with social media. He didn't know anything but social media. That's not his case. He's 43 years old. Hey, man, it, it, 
he didn't use any tact. Now, like I said, I have no problem with him smoking his weed, the strippers, I got the liquor. Hey, man, it looks like a wonderful day, a wonderful night. But why go live? Why go live, man? Who who are you trying to prove something to? Who, uh, man, this shows a lot of insecurity. That, that should have been a low-key private event. You and your boys got the strippers, got the weed, the liquor. Why go live? And a lot of brothers suffer from that, man. You know, self-esteem issues. And so they have to be seen. They have to be heard. They're not comfortable just in within their own skin. Uh, yeah, man, it, it shocked me that he went live with it. Like I said, I got no problem with the strippers, the liquor, and the weed. Um, by myself, I, I smoke cigars. Got a spirit of Cuba here. But, uh, to each his own. But, yeah, brothers, let's, uh, let's have some tact. Let's move in silence. All right? Um, let's get back to some old school values, man. Let's chill. Let's just know how to, you know, let's get back to chilling and keeping things on the low. Um, yeah, man, this this isn't, this isn't, uh, this wasn't the right play to run, Paul. And, uh, you know, he got millions, so he, he's probably not worried about it. But uh, I'm always thinking towards the future. I'm always thinking about different opportunities. So, you, you know, I, I've never uh, taken a picture with a drink in my hand. Do I drink? Yes, but I've never taken a picture with a drink in my hand uh, for a couple of reasons. I don't know what the future holds for me. And I don't want it to ever be misconstrued that I was drunk or heavily intoxicated. All right. So... You know, that's just something I don't do. Uh, before, if I have a drink in my hand before I take a picture, I put the drink up to the side. I don't like people who are drinking, taking pictures with me with their drinks in their hand. You know, uh, and so when I put my drink up, I think subconsciously people just follow suit and they put they, their drink up. I don't even say anything to them. They just, you know, I think out of instinct, they, they they put their their drink to the side when we're taking a picture, so yeah, that's just something, man. You you know you never know what opportunities could be out there for you. And uh, somebody might say, well, hey man, are you smoking a cigar on camera? Well, it, it would never. Uh, be uh, misconstrued or, or mistaken that uh, I'm drunk or intoxicated from a cigar, right? So, uh, my, so that's why I can smoke a cigar on camera, and that's why I don't have drinks in my hand on camera. And uh, it just represented, man, representing yourself, representing your higher self, representing your family. Um, you know, not embarrassing your family. You never want to embarrass your family. It's bigger than you. So, I mean, imagine, you know, how, how his wife must feel, you know, that this went public. You know, uh, you know, it's no one's business, man. She she maybe knew that, uh, you know, Paul likes to, uh, you know, do business with the strippers or party with the strippers, him and his boys, you know, playing poker or whatever. She probably knew that, but that's not for the world to know, All right? Let's have some discretion. Hey man, let's learn from this. Let's learn from this. Be comfortable in your own skin. Know who you are. We don't need the clout. We don't need to be seen. Just be yourself. Peace.